Hi everyone, glad to have you back. Subscribe to my channel and activate the bell so you don't miss any new videos from me. During my photographic life journey I have shot with countless camera systems. Cameras and lenses have been bought and sold again. Some have remained to this day. I gained experience with analog medium format as a young man. When I fulfilled my childhood dream and bought a Hasselblad 500cm. But the joy of it lasted only about 3 years. Because it turned out to be a real lemon gave up the ghost after numerous problems at some point completely. After that, a Mamiya 645000S, a Mamiya C330 and a Pentax 67 were fleeting partners. What remained was a Rollacord 2C and a Mamiya Universal Press. And then I saw it on eBay. Coming from Japan. With two lenses and lots of accessories. Plus very cheap. Immediately it was clear to me, this camera wants to be mine and it came to me. And today I would like to invite you to get to know this ingenious camera. Pentax 645M Pentax introduced the 645 series in 1984. The 645 without the N is the original model. It has a built-in motor drive with 1.5 frames per second, center-weighted TTL metering, several automatic exposure modes, and a small LCD display on the top that shows information such as ISO, exposure compensation and exposure number. The following applies to the entire Pentax 645 analog system. Unlike comparable medium format cameras, the 645 does not have an interchangeable film magazine. Instead, film is loaded into film holders, which are then inserted into the back of the camera and sealed light tight. Therefore, it is not possible to switch between different loaded film holders. The actual film format is 2.7 times larger than a normal 35mm film, and measures approximately 56 by 41.5mm. The crop factor of the Pentax 645 format compared to a 35mm camera is about 0.62. The Pentax 645N is a big step up from the earlier Pentax 645, offering autofocus which of course requires new Pentax FA lenses. Since the autofocus motor is in the camera body and not in the lenses themselves, matrix metering, a shutter speed control knob, another exposure compensation knob, a self-timer, a much brighter and sharper viewfinder with much more information displayed, and on top of that, exposure data imprinted on the edge of the film. The slider for the viewfinder diopter adjustment locks nicely and does not adjust itself as it did on the first Pentax 645 model. The 645N allows exposure compensation in thirds, it offers automatic exposure lock and the manual metering shows thirds with a bar graph for 6F stops. The basic concept was a medium format 35mm camera for which the designers used the slogan, Super Field Camera. The design concept adopted from the original Pentax 645 included Easy handheld shooting, compact, lightweight and flexible, eye-level viewfinder with short viewfinder darkening, automatic film advance allowing continuous shooting without repositioning the camera, durability and high reliability. All Pentax FA lenses with autofocus and all Pentax A lenses with manual focus are compatible with the 645. Manual focus lenses do not have autofocus, of course, but all viewfinder indications and exposure data printed on the edge of the film, except the focal length, work fine. Pentax 67 lenses fit with an adapter. Hey, now check out the features of this awesome camera in detail. To take pictures with the Pentax 645N, you need roll film and the appropriate film holder. Today, the roll film type 120 is common and almost exclusively used. You need a 120 film holder. This film type also offers 16 exposures per film. Before the age of digital photography, you could also use the so-called roll film type 220. It offered double the number of exposures, 32, but required a 220 film holder. You can see the steps to insert the film here in the video. It's really very easy. First, 
Change the empty film spool from the spool holder with the S mark to the other spool holder without the mark. Then remove the film tape, so that you can insert the protective paper of the film into the slot of the spool. Make sure the black side of the protective paper is facing you. This is the only way to ensure that the actual film is facing the lens correctly for exposure. If you see any color of protective paper other than black, the film will not be exposed. Sometimes the films are really stubborn and don't want to run the way I want them to. Then rotate the gear so that the start mark on the film is aligned with the S mark on the film spool holder. Now the film holder is inserted into the camera and unlocked. Now turn on the camera, either move the slide switch one step to the right to sound signals for various camera functions, or move the slide switch two steps to the right to sound no signals. When the shutter release button is pressed, the film automatically advances to the first frame. All camera functions require power. The camera is powered by six AA batteries. These batteries, also known as Mignon batteries, are readily available and inexpensive. If you prefer, you can also use 6 AA rechargeable batteries. Again, as a reminder, the crop factor is 0.62. The 645 film format has 2.6 times the area of full frame 35mm. In other words, a 100mm lens on 645 has about the same angle of view as a 60mm lens does on 35mm film. The focal length values in this table are slightly rounded for clarity. Most of the camera's functions are self-explanatory. There is a clearly labeled button for almost every function. Nevertheless, I'll show you all the functions in detail and give you one or two pieces of information. Otherwise I will remain silent. The camera features automatic film transport with single frame operation and a serial transport speed of 1.5 frames per second. The self-timer has a 12 second delay. The film speed must be set manually. A range from ISO 6 to ISO 6400 is available. To do this, push the button up, hold it there and select the desired value using the up and down buttons. 
I always expose color negative film one step higher than the actual ISO value. For example, the Kodak Gold 200 is always exposed at ISO 100. Corrections are made as usual and required depending on the subject. The camera also offers three different metering modes. Multi-segment metering, center weighted average metering, spot metering. The easy to reach exposure compensation button is also convenient. You can also take a series of shots automatically. Three images are captured. The exposure can be adjusted in one-third increments up to a full aperture. Of course, you can also combine this function with the exposure compensation button. I prefer to shoot from a tripod. The Pentax 645N offers you all the familiar exposure programs such as Program Automatic Exposure Mode, Aperture Priority Automatic Mode, Shutter Priority Automatic Mode and Manual Tracking Metering with Light Balance Display in the Viewfinder. In addition to the X setting for flash synchronization at 1 60th of a second, the B or Bulb function is also available for manual long exposures. For long exposures, you can use either a standard cable release or the much more expensive Pentax Cable Switch F. The Pentax Cable Switch F offers no advantages as long as your cable release has a locking function. Pentax offered some special ATTL flashes. AF500 FTZ, AF330 FTZ, AF220 FTZ, and the macro flash AF140C. I mostly use my good old Metz Macoblet CT4, which I bought in 1989, here only with hot shoe, so without ATTL metering. An X-Sync port for wired flash units is also provided.
When it comes to autofocus, you can choose between a spot AF area and a wide 3.0 AF area. You can also choose between single shot and servo autofocus. Servo AF supports predictive AF. Switching between manual focusing and the AF functions takes place on the respective lens. Of course, the Pentax 645 and also has an exposure lock button, labeled ML. When the button is pressed, the exposure is measured and locked as long as the button is pressed. The diopter of the viewfinder can be adjusted from minus 3.5 to plus 1.5. The adjustment snaps in tightly and does not change in everyday use. Well done, Pentax! As expected, the Pentax 645N is equipped with a shutter release button. This is the lever next to the lens near the grip. Pull it towards you to stop down the lens. This only works if you've selected an aperture on the aperture ring. If the lens is set to auto, the preview lever stops the lens all the way down. Multiple exposures are also possible. Turn the multiple exposure switch in the direction until it clicks into place. The frame counter on the LCD panel will blink. Press the shutter release button to take the first exposure. The film will not advance. Reposition the image and press the shutter button to take the second exposure. To cancel the multiple exposure mode at any time, turn the multiple exposure switch to the home position. You can take any number of exposures on a negative or slide. See the instruction manual for details. Pentax equips the 645N with a special strap buckle. I was lucky that the strap came with the camera. This strap can be quite expensive. But there should be third-party manufacturers who make this special buckle. Also, you can buy belt clips and then have a free choice and buy the belt you want. Another special feature of the Pentax 645N is that it has two tripod connections. Here, right next to the multi-exposure switch, is the second tripod socket for vertical shots. A great feature is the ability to record different exposure data. When this function is activated, a small D will appear on the LCD monitor. To turn this function on or off, press the lens hood and the up and down keys simultaneously. When FA lenses are used, the following data is recorded. Frame number, exposure mode, shutter speed, aperture value, exposure compensation, light metering mode, focal length for autofocus FA lenses only. If you are thinking about getting a Pentax 645N, or maybe you already have one, I recommend three accessories that you should buy right away. Since you can't change the viewfinder as you can with many medium format cameras, I bought an angle finder to go with the camera. I use the Angle Finder 645. It can be swiveled to all sides, but does not magnify the viewfinder image. All viewfinder indications, like aperture, light balance, are visible. There is also another Pentax 645 Angle Finder, Model A. With this model you can change the viewfinder magnification from 1 to 2 times. I haven't found this model anywhere, but it is mentioned in the brochures and manuals of the Pentax 645 N and N2. For all camera models where this is possible, I use a cross-line mat or have a grid image superimposed. This makes it easier to align the camera straight to the horizon, and this focusing screen makes it easier to compose the image. On the Pentax 645N, this screen is called AG80. In addition to the standard focusing screen, there are three other models available. While recording this video, I was surfing the web and saw an original Pentax AF 220T flash. It should cost 10 euros. Of course I bought it right away. It has a low guide number, but it can be swung up. So a white ceiling becomes a big diffuser. And for fill-in flash outdoors, it is just as powerful.
The Pentax 645N is an excellent 6x4.5 format camera. It offers features that were familiar from 35mm cameras of the time. If it weren't for its stately weight of 1280 grams or 45.2 ounces, I could easily forget that I was holding a medium format camera in my hands. The selection of lenses, especially the zoom lenses, is impressive. The camera is very solidly built, its controls are almost all self-explanatory, and it's just incredibly fun to shoot with. And fun is certainly what we are looking for in our shared hobby. My clear buy recommendation goes to the Pentax 645N. At the end of this video I'll show you some pictures I took with this camera and my standard zoom. The Pentax 645 FA 4.5 45-85mm. Thanks for watching and stay healthy.